So now that I've covered everything in the teach area, I'm going to go ahead and move on to the assess area, which is where you will find all of your documentation and assessment tools, as well as um, where to complete your checkpoints. So first, I'm going to start with um, adding documentation. So like I mentioned at the beginning of the webinar, um, some of the requirements have changed and I just want to point those out before I get too in deep with this. Um, for documentation purposes, one of the biggest things that has changed is that there is now a quantity requirement for each child. Um, each child must have a minimum of two pieces of documentation per child per week. That will be checked quarterly. Um, so let's say the quarter is 10 weeks, each child should have at a minimum of 20 pieces of documentation. Um, this is not going to be monitored uh, weekly, but just want to give you that, um, that guide, that timeline, so that way you and your co-teachers, assistant teachers can um, plan to meet that requirement. I also want to mention that um, each child is required to have a minimum of one piece of documentation per objective per quarter. And that is just to make sure that when you are completing those checkpoints and you are having those family conferences, that you're able to provide a holistic view of that child where, and have documentation to back up you know, their progress. So I'm gonna be talking through how to add documentation. So when you click the assess button, this is the page that you're taken to, and this is the page that you will use in order to add documentation. Um, I do wanna note as well that you do have the option of using the um, TS Gold documentation app. Um, I am not gonna be showing this on, showing that on this webinar because quite frankly, I am not tech savvy enough to figure out how to screen record on my phone. So <laughs> um, that being said, I'm just gonna walk through how to do that um, through the web-based platform. So um, you basically just go through the form. It's really simple. You're going to click the date that you observed the piece of documentation. You'll select which children. So you can select one and you can select all the children. Um, it's important to be as intentional as possible here. So I'm going to do one just for uh, Lois. Here under documentation type, you'll see there's four different options. Most, the most common ones, depending on whether you are in a remote learning situation or in person, are going to be general documentation if you are in person and family observation if you are uh, virtual. And I'll go into the details of that later. But for now, I'm just going to click general documentation, adding notes. Um, I'm not going to get too deep into the documentation best practices, but I will just say that you want to make sure that your notes are as factual and objective as possible. You're not adding, you know, your opinions, you're just adding what you observed. So, let's see. So this is an example of a specific and objective um, piece of documentation. Upload file here. So this would be if you have a photo or a video or an audio file to upload. Um, th this feature is really helpful, uh, or I'm sorry, it'll be more utilized when you use the app, um, but you can, if you don't um, use your devices in your classroom, you are able to upload any photos you may have onto your laptop or computer and upload them this way. And then here, you'll see assign objectives and dimensions. Um, and I, do, I did forget to mention earlier, so another additional requirement or um, policy change for the school year is that your pieces of documentation should have no more than three objectives or dimensions connected with it. And that is just to make sure that you are being, again, as specific and intentional as possible when recording documentation. Um, you don't want to have documentation just for documentation's sake. Um, so you'll connect the appropriate objectives. 
Let's see here. You'll hit save and continue. And that's gonna ask you to level the, the piece of documentation. This piece is not required. However, it is incredibly helpful when you're doing your checkpoints, which I'll demonstrate later on. So, let's see. And I did not rate these appropriately. I just clicked them for the sake of, you know, demonstrating how this works. So, you'll know you've added your documentation. And if you click view, it'll take you back to exactly what you inputted. So that is the basics of adding documentation. And if you look at the options on the left here, you can edit this piece of documentation, delete it, share it with family, and print it. Those are all fairly simple to follow. Uh, so I want to go back to adding documentation, talking about these other documentation types. Um, so the assessment opportunity card and the on-the-spot recording tool. So I'm going to first talk about the on-the-spot recording tool. The way you access that is you, you click on you know, the assess button here and on this top gray bar you'll see here on the spot. So you're going to go through the form again. You're going to select um, the objectives and dimensions that you want on this form. And you'll see it only has these three and I'll explain why in just a moment. Once you've selected all the parameters, you'll click next. And this is a, so what the on the spot recording tool is, is a checklist. The reason it only has those three areas, you have physical, you have math, and you have literacy. The reason for that is because these are easily observ observable. Um, they're, you're able to just, you know, at a glance kind of observe where the child is. So this is something you're going to want to print out. I recommend printing it, putting it on a clipboard maybe, somewhere where you can bring it around. And what you'll do is, so here is one of the physical objectives. So you'll see demonstrates traveling skills. So something I'd recommend doing with this is, you know, you put this on the clipboard, take it outside of the playground with you. And if you see Lois, um, experimenting with different ways of moving. If you see Lois on the playground and she is hopping and then she runs and then she skips, that would, you know, be pretty indicative of that. So you would, all you would do is you can do a check mark and you can write the date or you can just write the date in here, whatever it may be. But you'll write the date under the number for which you have observed this child perform this skill. And you can do it for all these different things. Um, so the way that you Add documentation for the on the spot recording tool is very really simple. Again, you just use the form. The biggest difference here is you're going to change this to on the spot. This one you are going to want to assign the objectives and dimensions because that's the whole purpose of the on the spot recording tool. So you'll hit save and continue. And I said that I saw her hopping and skipping. And you can add notes, but because it's from the on-the-spot recording tool, it's not completely necessary. And you're done. So that's how you use the on-the-spot recording tool. Um, now, if you recall, there was one other option on the, um, the assessment opportunity card. There are a couple of additional resources as well that I'm going to share. So when you are on this page here, what you're going to want to do is click on this question mark that's in the bottom left hand corner of your screen. And here you'll find additional documentation resources. So these assessment opportunity cards are just ways that you can quickly again observe children's progress towards specific objectives. Um, they're quick little games and activities. They're easy to implement and it gives you an easy way to figure out where to level that child. So it's a really good way to just, you know, do a quick pulse check of where your children fall. So again, these are able to be printed um, and you can also add them. I would recommend printing them out if you're planning on using them and add them to your lesson plan as well. You'll also see here there are a couple additional forms. The use of these is not required, but they are available to you. The alphabet knowledge form, you'll see here, you can print this out for each child. You can keep a digital copy. 
Um, it just, it allows for you to input for every child, whether they recognize uppercase and lowercase numbers, if they're able to write the, or letters, I'm sorry, <laughs> uh, recognize uppercase and lowercase letters, write those letters and letter sound connections. So that would be that they know that A makes the A sound, B makes the B sound, and so on. This form is also available in Spanish. You have the number concepts form, which is the same idea. Um, it allows you to mark when and if the child is able to identify the number correctly, and they're able to associate it to a quantity. And this form goes up to the number 20. And the same with the shapes form. So again, not required, but they're really helpful for you to use and they're there. So the next thing that I'm going to discuss that's within this assess area are checkpoints. So checkpoints are the quarterly assessments that you'll be doing um, to indicate, you know, your, the children in your class, their progress, their mastery of these skills. These will be helpful in monitoring their growth throughout the school year. It'll be helpful in having conversations with families during their conferences and so forth. It'll also help you plan. So first I'm going to show you how to access your checkpoint due dates. So you'll see on this gray uh, band here, you'll click checkpoint dates. It's super important to make sure that you are looking at the correct year and the correct age. It automatically puts you on infants, toddlers, and twos. You want this second option, preschool, pre-K, and then K through three. Now these are not the correct dates for the 2020 and 2021 school year. So please do not think that. These will be updated by the time school starts, but I am just showing you for, you know, demonstrative purposes, how to find those dates. So next, when it is time to complete your checkpoint, you can do it either by child or by class. Doesn't matter which, there's not a right or wrong way. So I'm just gonna do the checkpoint by child just to show you. Um, so you'll begin, a begin by selecting a child. You're going to want to make sure you're in the right area. Um, mine, it will not allow me to populate for the 2020-2021 school year yet because it hasn't started. Um, but make sure you're selecting the right checkpoint period. And what you'll do is you'll see there's all of the, the areas uh, for development. And then you'll see the objectives for development and learning. So what you're going to be doing is you're going through and based on your observations and your documentation and you know the activities that you've implemented in your lesson plan, you will be leveling each child um, for all three quarters, for fall, winter, and spring. Um, and again, I'm not gonna get super deep into the, the specifics and the best practices on how to do this. I do just wanna point out, you know, like what you'll do is you'll look at these indicators here, which is what these are and determine based on your knowledge of that child where they fall. You'll know that you've done it when you have a green check mark. You'll go through much more carefully and slowly than what I'm doing. Right now, I just want to show you how to finalize your checkpoints. All right, so once you get to the end of an area, so this is the last objective within social emotional, you'll see here you can use this guide to determine where you're at. Um, so you are not done. Even if you see an orange full circle that says completed, you are not done. You need to finalize these checkpoints and all you have to do is click the finalize button. So when you are completing your checkpoints, if you don't see a green check mark beside all of these areas, that means you, they are incomplete. And I do also wanna mention another policy change is that there will be an additional layer of accountability regarding the completion of these. Every quarter, your administrators and your directors will be submitting a form through the partnership that they will um, they'll be signing that says that they have reviewed your checkpoints that they are completed and finalized they were submitted on time that they have also reviewed um, you know the documentation for quantity and for quality and to make sure that you are meeting those requirements 
So I wanna mention that just to make sure that you all know to communicate with your administrators regarding this and making sure that you are keeping them in the loop. If you, know, have, if you have any questions or you are in need of additional support, they are there for you to utilize. Um, so that is how you complete your checkpoints. Again, you can complete them by class. And the biggest difference is that instead of just showing one child's name, it will be two. I do want to mention while I'm clicking on this, so you'll see here there's a little folder that's different. So next to Lois's name, this is where I rated her on that piece of documentation from the on the spot recording tool. The same for Bob. There was one I've done previously where I rated him. So these are helpful because you already know based on that documentation where you've rated that child. So when you complete a checkpoint, it's not a guessing game of, oh, what did Lois do? What was, what did she say? I don't quite remember. This will help you stay on track and be aware at all times of where your children are. And that way you can complete your checkpoints and level them appropriately.